Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the VPS Avenger 2 Master Course. Today's video, we're going to be covering the amp, filter, and the shaper section. Avenger 2's amp section comes with some very cool and special controls, and we can have up to five independent amp modules. The filter section has lots of different and great sounding filters, and we can have up to five filter modules and a master filter module as well. And the shaper section lets us dial in some very interesting distortion that we can route pre or post filter for more added control. So let's get started. If we take a look at the routing panel, we're going to see a slot here called Amp 1. Now, if we right click this slot, Avenger is going to show us exactly where that is. So this is the Amp module. We can have up to five different Amp modules if we'd like to. All we have to do is click this plus here and it'll add a second one right over there. We can always right click it, initialize it, or we can delete it. Let's first take a look at the bottom controls here. So we have Attack, Hold, Decay, Sustain, and Release, or an AHDSR envelope. The attack knob determines how long it takes for our signal to reach its maximum amplitude once a note is played. And then hold determines how long to hold the signal at its maximum attack level before it enters the decay stage. Decay determines how long it takes for the signal to reach the sustain level. And sustain is the only parameter here that is not measured in time, but measured in a value. Now this will be the amplitude level a note will sustain at while we hold down a note. Now release determines how long it will take the signal to return to silence after a key is let go. So let's take a quick tour of the envelope. Let's give us some unison and let's take a look at the attack. We can always right click to change the contour of the curve. Let's bring our sustain level pretty close to the bottom. Increase our decay and also change the decay curve by right clicking. Increase the release as well and we can always change the curve as well here by right clicking. And let's give some hold before the decay starts. And to the right of these knobs, we have an external source. So if we click this here, we can have a different envelope affect the amp. So for example, we can go to the filter one, and now this envelope would basically control the amp. The first knob here at the top is gonna to be our volume control. Now this determines the level of the amp, and this can be useful if we have a lot of oscillators routed to this amp, and we just want to adjust the volume just a little bit as well. And it also reacts to velocity, which is really cool. So if we increase the slide all the way to the top, and we hit a soft note, or we hit a hard note, and a soft note, and a hard note. We can also adjust the curve with the button up here on the top. So next up, we have the spike knob. Now this is a really cool knob that we can use to enhance the attack portion of our signal. So let's take a listen to that real quick. And we also have a secondary function via the right click. Now this is going to adjust the spike curve. So let's take a listen to that real quick. Now the cool thing is that this knob can be useful for getting things to pop out a little bit more in a mix. I really like to use these on ARPs and it also reacts to velocity which is really cool as well. Next up we have the pan knob which is pretty self-explanatory, it moves things throughout the stereo field. And next to the pan knob, we have the pan tracking. Now this one is really cool because if we turn this knob to the right, our higher notes are gonna be more in the right speaker and our lower notes are gonna be more in the left speaker. Let's take a listen to that real quick. And the opposite is also true if we turn this to the left, the lows are on the right and the highs are on the left. And next up we have spread, probably one of my favorite knobs in the entire synthesizer. So the idea of this is as we turn this to the right, we can see at the bottom that this says alternate. So the more we go to the right, the more our notes are going to alternate between the left and the right speaker as we hit them. And here's very drastically. And anywhere to the left from center is going to be a random position throughout the stereo field. And very intense. Let's first take a look at how routing works for our filters. So starting from an init patch, if we look at our oscillator routing section, we can see that the oscillator is routed to filter one right over here. Now, if we right click this, Avenger is going to show us exactly where this is. And by default, our filter is going to be the Anna Low Pass 12, which we can see right over here. The largest knob here in the filter section is going to be our cutoff knob. Now this knob controls where our filter will begin filtering frequencies of the incoming signal. In other words, how open or closed our filter will be. And this knob also reacts to velocity, which is really cool, via the slider right over here. So if we bring this all the way up to the top and I have a couple notes down over here, eight specifically, and it's going to be increasing in velocity. And take a look at the cutoff knob as well as we listen to this here. And 
And if there's ever a button right above the velocity, that's where we're going to be adjusting the velocity curve. On the left-hand side of the cutoff knob, we have K-Track. Now, this parameter stands for keyboard tracking, and the idea here is that if we increase this value, the filter cutoff position will move according to the pitch of the notes that we play. So let's set this to 100%, and let's bring our cutoff down substantially low, and let's take a listen as we ascend notes on our keyboard. So you see how this is opening up the filter as we go higher. Now if we control click this back to its default and do the same thing. We're really not opening up the filter at all. The knob directly to the right of the cutoff is going to be our resonance knob. Now this knob will accentuate the frequencies at the cutoff point of our filter. So as we increase this and do a filter sweep, we can hear it and we can see it right over here on our spectrum view. Now if we brought this all the way down and did the same thing. What's also very cool is that the resonance knob reacts to velocity. So we can bring the slider up as well and maybe increase the knob just a little bit and drop our cutoff down and take a listen to this, what we have here. So the harder that we play, the more resonance that we get. To the right of the resonance knob, we have a drive knob. Now, this will have a few different functions depending on the filter that we choose. But if it's on drive, this is going to be distortion inside the filter. And we also have an oversampled version as well. So let's bring our cutoff down just a bit, increase our resonance, and take a listen to this drive. And then the oversampled version. And if we added some unison to see what that would sound like. What's also really cool is that this drive knob can also function as a comb. So a comb filter can be added to many different filter types and can make some really cool sounds. So for example, if we've got some unison here, we change our drive to our comb. If we were to select a bandpass filter, this drive knob would function a little bit differently. So for example, let's go down to our type, let's go to bandpass and let's select SSM BP24. And let's give it some unison, so maybe something like this here, drop our cutoff down just a bit, increase some resonance, and then let's take a look and see what happens. So this knob is basically setting the distance of the low and the high pass bands. Keep in mind, this knob also reacts to velocity. And next up, we have the envelope knob. This knob will control the modulation of the cutoff knob via the envelope controls down here at the bottom. And it also reacts to velocity. So what we can do is we can bring down our cutoff, maybe give us some unison, and then maybe set some resonance so we can really see what's going on. We have some notes like this, and then increase our envelope and see what happens. So now we're modulating this cutoff according to this envelope. So if it decays too quickly, we can always increase the decay. And these knobs function just like the ones right up here at the top. And keep in mind, this knob can also function in negative territory. So if we brought this down over here and maybe brought up our cutoff, we get a whole different type of sound. So next up, we have the filters themselves and filters in any synthesizer play a crucial role. So if we click this list here, we have quite a few different categories. We have low pass, we have high pass, we have band pass, band stop, and some special filters to choose from. And the different prefixes we see of the filters are gonna be different versions of that type of filter. Now, since I like to read everything I can about Avenger 2, I found this in the manual and I think you'll find this interesting as well. 
And here's what the manual says about the filters. So we have the one pole. Now this is the most basic filter type in 6dB. This is quite a soft filter, although it offers resonance, which is untypical for a 6dB filter. It's best used on natural instruments like strings, piano, or brass. Then we have the AN filters, the basic filter type of Avenger. They have the lowest possible CPU consumption while still sounding analog and smooth. And then we have Nex filters. Now these filters are taken from Nexus and their characteristic is to have a quick envelope reaction time. They also boost the high treble, especially the 24 dB version right here. And the CPU consumption is gonna be higher than with the AN types. Next up, we have the vintage filters. These are some of my personal favorites. And the manual says these are specially modeled vintage analog filters. Their CPU consumption is higher than the AN type, but they sound fantastic and have several special things like resonant self-oscillation, input-driven distortion, and the resonance can simulate analog instability done via the mod factor field above the resonance dial. So this is something I wanna show you real quick. So from an init patch, what we can do is add some unison here, drop down our cutoff, and increase the resonance to maybe somewhere in the high 60s, something like that. And then let's switch out our filter to the low pass vintage 12 and let's give it some envelope amount and see what we have so far this is cool let's increase the decay for our envelope just a little bit so it lasts a little longer okay so now what we need to focus on is going to be the resonance we can see it and we can hear it and also the resonance sustain so this is going to be the instability at zero and now 100 percent So it looks and sounds different, especially the sustain, which is really cool. So let's take a listen to that one more time. Here's zero. And 100. Definitely really cool. So next up here down at the bottom, we have the PXL filters, and the manual says these are taken from our standalone filter plugin, VPS Filter XL. They have a special sounding smooth and clear resonance. Next up, we have the POW filter, and the manual says, this filter uses slightly different mathematical functions to create the filter. It has a slightly different sound, especially with resonance. In the high-pass mode, this sounds more like a 6 dB filter, but with resonance, it behaves much stronger. Next up, we have the IRS filters, and the manual says, this is another filter with a different mathematical approach. The 12 dB type has a very special and dampened reaction to high resonance. In the high pass section, we have a filter called the COS. Now this type reacts quite dampened and more narrow to higher resonances. Its bands are also less steep and more equal to the entire curve. In the band pass and the band stop section, we have another filter called the SSM, the one that we saw a little bit earlier on. Now this is a band reject band pass filter and it's made up of two corresponding filters. Down here at the bottom of the filter list, we have a category called special. Now there's lots of cool filters in here and I highly recommend you check out the manual if you're curious how these work. But I do wanna show you this VPS talk box as I find this one exceptionally interesting. So if you increase our mix here for our unison, drop down our cutoff and give us some envelope depth here, check this out. We can even add a sub oscillator as well, something like this here. And even add an ARP. So you can have a lot of fun in this special category. These filters are all really, really, really cool. One last filter that I do want to bring your attention to as it's one of my personal favorites and it sounds really good. If we go down here to the low pass category, it's all the way at the bottom called the TB Low Pass 18. Now this is modeled after the TB303 filter and I highly recommend for you to check it out as it's really fun to play with and make some cool acid sounds. So like I mentioned earlier, there's lots of different filters inside Avengers, so definitely go check them out. And not only do we have all these really cool types of filters, we also have up to five filter modules and we just go and click the plus to keep adding more and more and more and more. And then if that's not cool enough, we also have a master filter at the very end. So let's talk for a minute about the filter routing. So we route our oscillators to the filter on the routing panel and then we can begin to play with the filter, right? But what if we also wanted to add another filter and send the output of the first filter into the input of the second filter? So here's how we'd go about doing that. Our first one's already mapped for us. So we need to go down here to the filter section, select this plus, and then we're gonna have another filter. So for filter two, what we can do is click on the type, let's go down to high pass, and then maybe select this, uh, this and a high pass 12. And let's bring our cut up all the way down. So now in our routing panel, we need to select this plus and then go to filter two. So if you look at what's happening here, we see this routing that goes to filter one and then it goes down to filter two. So if you look at filter one, we have our low pass. It's shaving off the top end. And we go to filter two and it's going to be doing the opposite. The 
routing panel inside Avenger is extremely important and it runs from top down. So in this case, filter one's output is getting fed into filter two's input. Now, if we want to swap this, we can do that. So we can click on filter two, drag this above filter one. Now, in this case, filter two's output is getting fed into filter one's input. What we're doing here is routing the signal in series. In Avenger, we can also route our signal in parallel meaning that a copy of the signal goes directly to the output and another copy goes to the filter. So let's see how this works by going to the routing panel. Let's left click filter one. And we can see here by default, it's gonna be on serial mode. Now, if we click on a parallel mode, what we can see happen now is that we have two slots appear, one that says filter one send and one that says filter one return. Filter one send is going to be the amount of signal that we send to filter number one. And filter one's return is gonna be how much of that filtered signal is returned back to us. If either slider is at 0%, the filter will have no effect, right? And that's because we're not either sending any signal to the filter, so nothing can be returned, or we're not returning any signal, so it doesn't even matter how much we send. So there's always gonna to have to be a balance of those two sliders. Remember that a copy of our signal in this case is going to our output and another to filter one. This is why it is parallel. So let's add some unison here on the left-hand side, give us some resonance, and then do some filter sweeps and see how that sounds. So in this case, we can hear a clean sound wave that never really gets entirely filtered away, and we also hear the filter sweep. This type of processing can make patches really, really interesting. So I recommend to try experimenting using two filters, the first one being in series mode and the second filter being in parallel. And finally, we have our master filter. So if you look at our routing panel, we can see that the master filter is right before the output, and we can turn this on by clicking the power button, and then we can see it light up over here on the right-hand side of our filter section. So if we click this here, it's gonna look a little bit different, but the master filter is useful for adding the final touches on our sound, as it's gonna be after all the five filters, if we're even using that many. The real difference between the master filter and the other ones is that it doesn't have an envelope, it doesn't have key tracking, and it does not react to velocity. It does, however, have a post gain knob right here on the right-hand side. Below our filter section, we have another section called Shaper. Now this one is really cool because it can distort our sound in very interesting ways and has lots of different algorithms to choose from. So if we want to add this Shaper to our signal flow, we need to go over here to the routing panel, hit the plus, and then select Shaper 1 from the drop down menu. Now it's going to be turned on and it's going to be in our signal flow. And if we're ever unsure where anything is, we can always right click this here and Adventure will show us exactly where that is. The first knob that we're going to see in the shaper module is our drive knob. So let's play a note and listen to see how that changes the sound and also look at the oscilloscope to see how that changes the waveform. And if we click on soft, this is going to bring up a list with a lot of cool different algorithms to choose from. So let's scroll through a few with our mouse wheel. So let's go back to soft as that's one of my personal favorites. And to the right, we have a velocity slider, which is really cool because the harder that we hit the notes, the more distortion that we're gonna get. And to the right of that, we have gain and frequency and then gain two and frequency two. So basically we're pushing signal into the distortion module via this gain slider. And we can choose with a frequency knob where exactly that's gonna be. And we can also change the bandwidth with right click. And what's really cool as well is we have this split mode, so take a listen to see how this changes the sound. So this is moving it throughout the stereo field, giving us a huge and wide sound. As with other modules inside Avenger, we can click the plus if we'd like to add more shapers to our signal. And also keep in mind that we've been running this first shaper before the filter. However, if you put the shaper after the filter, you're going to get quite a different sound. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of the amp, the filter, and the shaper sections. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video.